Mayor, if I may, we're okay. recording now. The regular city council meeting of December 6 is being held with the quorum of city of Westlake Council physically in attendance at the Westlake Council Chambers 4005 Seminole Pratt Whitney Road. Public comments may be accepted prior to the meeting utilizing the electronic comment card available on the city's website. Public comments are also permitted at the appropriate time during the meeting. The mayor will call for such during public comment and you may participate at this time utilizing the system's virtual hand feature and waiting to be acknowledged. Please note this meeting is being recorded both voice and video and to remember your mic may be live. Any person in the virtual meeting causing a disruption or being inappropriate will be removed. If I may also remind those physically in attendance, <clears throat> please utilize microphones so that the virtual audience and a clear recording of the meeting is produced. Thank you, Mayor O'Connor. Thank you, Madam City Clerk. I would like to call to order the regular City Council meeting of December 6, 2022 at 6.01 p.m. And I would also like to extend a thank you to those in attendance for joining us this evening. Madam City Clerk, may we have a roll call, please? Yes, Mayor. <clears throat> Councilwoman Leonard? Present. Councilman Martinez? Present. Councilwoman Valladon? Present. Vice Mayor Langowski? Present. Mayor O'Connor? Present. Motion, or we have a quorum. Excellent. If you are able, please stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Mm -hmm. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Are there any additions, deletions, or modifications of the agenda? <clears throat> if none, may I have a motion? To Excuse me. Yes, sir. It would be an adjustment with respect to adding a resolution on. For the adoption of item D, which pertains to the education use. Advisory board. So let's modify the agenda item D to include resolution number 2022 35. May I please have a resolute a uh, motion to reflect such to amend the to amend the agenda item D is in Delta motion to amend the agenda item D. Second, second. thank you. Mm -hmm. We have a motion by Councilwoman Valladon, seconded by Councilwoman Leonard. Roll call. Councilwoman Leonard. Yes. Councilman Martinez. Yes. Councilwoman Valladon. Yes. Vice Mayor Langowski. Yes. Mayor O'Connor. Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Now may I please have a motion to approve the agenda as amended. Motion to approve agenda as a motion to approve agenda as amended. Second. <clears throat> Motion by Councilman Martinez, seconded by Vice Mayor Langowski. Roll call, Councilman Martinez. Yes. Councilwoman Valladon. Yes. Vice Mayor Langowski. Yes. Mayor O'Connor. Yes. Councilwoman Leonard. Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. Public comments. This section of the agenda, this section of the agenda allows for comments from the public to speak. Each speaker will be given a total of three minutes to comment. A public comment card should be completed and returned to the city clerk. When you are called to speak, please go to the podium, unmute your device, and prior to addressing the council, please state your name and address for the record. Please, if you have three minutes to speak, do we have any public comments, Madam City Clerk? Mayor, I receive no previous comment cards. We'll give the virtual audience a moment to raise their virtual hand. If you wish to make a comment, please raise your virtual hand. If you're a device that has been muted, please press star six. Don't believe we have any public comments. We have no public comments. Thank you. Consent agenda. This section of the agenda consists of routine or administrative items that require final approval by the city council and may be approved in its entirety by a single motion. There'll be no discussion of these items unless a council member requests such in which event the item will be removed from the consent agenda and then considered on a future agenda. May I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Vice Mayor Langowski, seconded by Councilwoman Valladon. Roll call. Councilwoman Valladon. Yes. Vice Mayor Langowski. Yes. Mayor O'Connor. Yes. Councilwoman Leonard. Yes. Councilman Martinez. Yes. Roll, uh, motion carries 5-0. Thank you. 
We have before us resolution 2022-33. This is a resolution for the plat of pod PC-2. City attorney, please read the resolution by title only. Well, if also, if you would allow me, sir, to swear in people as a quasi-judicial proceeding. Quasi-judicial, let's swear them in. All those who intend to testify during the course of this proceeding, please stand, raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Resolution by title only. Resolution of the City Council, City of Westlake, Florida, approving a replat of open space track one, Persimmon Boulevard, East Plat two, Plat Book 128, pages 16 through 19, inclusive, and a replat of open space track one, Ilex Way, phase two, Plat Book 128, pages 22 through 25, inclusive. Public records, Palm Beach County, Florida, line is section 12, Township 49 South, range 40 East City, Westlake, Palm Beach County, Florida, recordation, providing for conflicts, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date. Thank you, City Attorney. Let's do our uh, staff comments or presentations first. Are there any? Staff. By staff first. Yeah. Okay. We have no uh, presentation from the engineering department. Let's do applicate applicant presentations. Okay. She didn't get the presentation, so I'll just give it to you verbally. Let's do it. Oh, good. Good evening for the record. Donaldson hearing here tonight on behalf of Minto PBLH LLC. Uh, what is before you tonight is the uh, platting of a parcel that's located at the uh, southeast corner of Persimmon Boulevard and Ilex. Uh, this is a parcel that's basically surrounded by uh, uh, the uh, uh, what we refer to as Sky Cove South. So the, the the southern border of the site is Sky Cove South, and the eastern border of the site is is Sky Cove South. Uh, and we're simply this is a the only unplotted property that's located within that area. It's about 9.3 acres and it's known as parcel PC2. So your staff has found this plot to be consistent with the requirements of the Florida statutes and consistent with the requirements of your code meeting all technical requirements. So we would just respectfully request your approval this evening. Thank you, Don. Um, I'm assuming it's Sky Cove South. They were planning. No, no, it's the it's the plot of parcel PC2. So it's a 9.3 acre parcel located right at the corner of uh, Persimmon Boulevard and Ilex. It's surrounded by Sky Cove South. Gotcha. Mr. Mayor, there's some additional background on that. If you recall, excuse me, sir, are you sworn in? Yes, I am, yes. sir. Okay, I did stand. I watched it. I watched it. I was I saw it. I do every time because I know I'm going to have to call it. The applicant concludes their presentation and then turn it over to staff. Right. Thank you. Um, what ultimately are we planning for this? Plat is it residential? Is it there? This, as you'll recall, a few months ago, the city processed a land use amendment on this particular site, uh, from the civic designation to uh, downtown mixed use. Got it. And so, uh, we're this is the next step because it's really the only unplatted piece in that quadrant. So, we're just following through with plotting the parcel and hopefully setting the stage for the development of that in the future, sir. So we should expect to see a site plan. Uh, I would hope forthcoming. So. Yes, Mr. Carter would be the one to tell you about that. Excellent. Um, let's turn it over to staff to maybe. That's the background the I was going to fill in <laughs> on that. I don't have any other information other than that, but that is part of the process is uh, we changed the designation. Now they'll plot it. Now they can, after it's planted, they can do a site plan and then come in with a site plan for your approval. Excellent. So just to refresh everyone's memory, this was the, uh, the parcel that was previously designated as civic use. We were able to trade it around in terms of, uh, um, the land that was previously designated as commercial, which was the church we Correct. turned into civic freeing this up as potentially taxable income for the for the city and uh, physically platting the land is the next step. Correct. Are there any comments or questions from council? I have none. No comment. <clears throat> that being said, let's open up for public comments. Madam Clerk. May I receive no previous comment cards? We'll give the virtual audience a moment to raise their virtual hand. 
If you wish to make a comment, please raise your virtual hand. If you've been muted, please press star six. Mayor, we don't have any comments. Any comment from the wonderful public in attendance? Yes, sir. Please take the mic and state your name and address for the record. Gary Werner, 16005 Key Viscane Lane. Just a question. Is that the property that has a little bit of fill placed on it? It's not. No. Okay. okay. You know Great which question. property I'm referring to? Yes, yes. I believe so. Yeah, it, it's uh, the C2. Across from uh, tax collector. It's yes, that's C2. Right. The mound appears and it goes away. <laughs> and it goes back. <laughs> um, thank you for your comment, sir. If there's no further comment, the public hearing is closed. And if there's no further discussion, I'd like to entertain a motion on resolution 2022 33. Motion to approve. I second. Motion by Vice Mayor Langowski, seconded by Councilwoman Leonard. Roll call Vice Mayor Langowski. Yes. Mayor O'Connor. Yes. Councilwoman Leonard. Yes. Councilman Martinez. Yes. Councilwoman Valladeron. Yes. Motion carries 5 0. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Mayor. Ordinance 2022-14. City Attorney, please. Uh, is this quasi-judicial? No, sir. All right. Let's read by title only. Thank you. Ordinance by title only in order to City Council, City of Westlake, Florida, amending the city sign code, providing for a mandatory signage design within the City of Westlake, providing for purpose and intent, providing for definitions, providing for an amendment to max sign faces as identified Table 6-1 entitled Residential Pod Entry Monument, providing for an amendment to additional requirements as identified Table 6-1, public right-of-way sign location, providing for an amendment to max size copy areas identified in Table 6-1 entitled Wall Sign for Ground Floor Uses with Separate Entrances at Ground Level, providing for codification, providing for conflicts, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date. Thank you. I believe we have a presentation by PNC. Uh, good evening for the record, Osniel Leon, Senior Planner of the City of Westlake. This um, item is the second reading uh, for the Chapter Sign Code Amendment Ordinance 2022-14. Uh, this uh, came before you and it was recommended for approval. Uh, since the first reading, we have made just a minor change on this table uh, just to clear, further clarify and avoid any conflicts on max sign faces. As you can see, it used to be one. Now it's two, and then the additional requirements, we changed the language uh, to state developments with a shared entrance may have V-shaped monument signs, just to further clarify um, on this table. And uh, that was uh, that was it for changes. Uh, staff just recommend approval of this ordinance. Thank you, Mr. Leon. Do we have any comments from the council? No comments. No. Mm -hmm. No comment. May I have a motion? Motion to approve ordinance 2022-15. 14. Second. Mo motion by Councilwoman Bayeron, seconded by Councilwoman mm -hmm. Leonard. Roll call, Mayor O'Connor? Yes. Councilwoman Leonard? Yes. Councilman Martinez? Yes. Councilwoman Bayeron? Yes. Vice Mayor Langowski? Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. Thank you. Ordinance 2022-15, Temporary Structures and Uses, City Attorney, read by title only. Yes, sir. An ordinance by title only. An ordinance to City Council, City of Westlake, Florida, many cities code of ordinances by creating an article to be determined entitled Temporary Structures and Uses, providing for the regulation of temporary structures and uses, providing for the establishment of matrix for temporary structures and temporary uses, providing for the regulation of sale models, providing for the regulation of temporary construction trailers and portable storage units, providing for codification, providing for conflicts, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date. Mr. Leon. Thank you. Uh, for the record, it was Neil Leon, Senior Planner for the City of Westlake. Uh, this ordinance came uh, for the LPA and was recommended for approval. This is the first reading uh, of this ordinance. I'll be happy to go through the uh, PowerPoint presentation. Uh, if the board I don't think that's we preferred, all, but... <laughs> uh, staff uh, does recommend approval of the ordinance. It's, it's still fresh on the mind of uh, <laughs> the LPA board. Sorry. Jeez. 
let's uh, open up for discussion or comments from the council. I have not. No comments. Okay. I'll, I'll remind you the LPA board did recommend approval on this. <laughs> 20 something minutes ago. <laughs> uh -huh. Let's uh, do we need to open for public comment on this item, city attorney? No, sir, you can. Not mandatory, but you can. Let's go ahead and open it up. Why not? May I receive no previous public comments? We'll give the virtual audience a moment to raise their virtual hand. If you wish to make a comment, please raise your virtual hand. If you've been muted, please press star six. Mayor, we have no comments. There being no uh, further discussion, may I entertain a motion, please? Motion to approve ordinance number 2022-15. I second. We have a motion by Councilman Martinez, seconded by Councilwoman Leonard. Roll call, Councilwoman Leonard. Yes. Councilman Martinez? Yes. Councilwoman Valleron? Yes. Vice Mayor Langowski? Yes. Mayor O'Connor? Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Moving on, we have before us <laughs> Ordinance 2022-16, Sexually Oriented Businesses. City Attorney, please read by title only. Ordinance of the City Council, City of Westlake, Florida, amending the Code of Ordinance by creating a section to be determined entitled Sexually Oriented Businesses. Providing for definitions of sexually oriented businesses, providing for licensing and regulation of such businesses and their employees, providing for a distance separation between entertainers and patrons and sexually oriented businesses, providing for codification, providing for a conflicts clause, providing for severability, and providing an effective date. Thank you, City Attorney. Nielsa. Yes, Mr. Mayor, Council Members, Nielsa Zacarias, Planning and Zoning Director for the City of Westlake. In front of you, part of the package is the entire ordinance with uh, several pages, has uh, 22 pages. So what I would like to highlight on this um, is page 20. So, and in order to highlight that, I will pass around the zoning map. On page 20 of the ordinance. Do we have the ability to put the zoning map on the on the screen or not? No. Okay, that's fine. not right now. So I provide it here. So on page 20 is the location of this type of business. So <clears throat> sexually oriented business established as defined here in which meet all requirements set for in this chapter shall be permitted only in the mixed use district and shall be located the following minimum distances from other uses. So on the map, you can see where is the mixed use district is the orange. Okay. All what is orange is the zoning uh, mixed use district. Okay. So <clears throat> Nelsa, what um, on page 20, what number are you in? A 30, 33. Okay. Yes. Page 20 location. So the location of this type of um, business is only in the mixed use district. So um, it shall be located uh, the following minimum distances from other uses. Number one, another sexually oriented business established for or use at 1,000 feet. Number two, a church or place of worship, 1,000 feet. Number three, an educational institution 1,000 feet. Number four, a public park, 1,000 feet. Number five, existing residence, residential zone or real property, 1,000 feet. So in terms of zoning, that is very important. So these, these businesses um, need to comply with this specific requirement for location, the distance separation of 1,000 feet and all those different type of uses. So uh, we work very, uh, extremely, uh, we work close with the legal, our, the city legal council. He has expertise uh, preparing this ordinance and I'm sure. Guys, I'm, so, I'm sorry guys, I can't hear Nielsa. 
What? I'm so sorry. Can I can't hear Neil talking. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. So this ordinance, as always, uh, we work as a team uh, with the city manager, the legal counsel, and us. And um, Mr. Uh, DJ has uh, expertise on this type of uh, legal requirements for this type of use. If you have any questions, we are here. Got a lot. Um, <laughs> let's translate a thousand feet to miles first. Less than a quarter mile. Fifth of a mile? Five miles and 250. Yeah, 13, 20 and a quarter. So we're talking uh, a couple blocks? Not, not that even. far. Yeah, not, not far. Yeah. Mm -mm. All right. Um, I'll say it. What are we doing and why? Why, why is this? Our legal counsel can answer the specific about that. It's a federal requirements. Which you have to understand these businesses are entitled to conduct business within Understood. the city. And you have to have a rational basis for distance requirements. So that should comport with other separation requirements in the code. You can't just arbitrarily pick a distance and say, I want Two miles. I want three miles. Okay. You you need to be so what we try to do legally is, we can't do that. Legally. Right. You you can make the motion. <laughs> I would not advise you to consider it. What we're trying to do is ensure that if businesses come into the city, we regulate them. And we also are intended to the distance separation to I don't want to say limit their ability, but make sure that we don't have proliferation of such businesses. And so this separation is consistent with what we have with other businesses in the city. But if you're not happy with it, we can go back between first and second reading. We can look at it and re-examine it and report back to you if there's an opportunity to expand it. In the, and more, most importantly, in the record establish a basis for it not we, we can't pick an arbitrary distance understood um is there a distance that's more than a thousand feet that's consistent with other cities we'd have to look we, have to look. we, we can dig deeper i think that's important um especially in neighboring cities that are we can drop that you know royal palm or palm beach royal gardens palm, wellington, wellington our neighboring i'm not talking about let's pick a random city in alaska Let's find. Well, we don't do that. <laughs> let's find. Uh, let's. I'd, I'd love to know what's consistent with our, our westerly neighbors. Yeah. Okay. First and foremost, um, if we can't pick arbitrarily pick a distance, can we pick a use, or does it have to go into mixed use? Well, I defer to your planning uh, director for that. But you do need. You can pick certain categories yes sir i mean i understand that these are constitutionally protected businesses and they have the freedom to exist and operate and nobody including myself would ever want to uh step on that um but i think that it's important that we do this with with care and prop you know we handle this properly, at least now. Now it would be the time. Yes. And you're talking about handling where we will allow them. Distance, where they would go. Yeah. Um, and if we can, I, we can, whatever discretion we have that's within the Constitution and legally allowed, yeah. I think it would be wise to exercise. Um, uh, as uh, the map shows, our city has very limited number of zoning districts. Uh, we can count mixed use. Then we have the yellow, which is the town center. And we have residential. And then we have, you know, basically we don't have too many options. Can we create one? What for is them? the closest mixed use currently to a school? Now, when Mayor, I can I also ask, add to that? Please. I guess but, that was going to be my question. If we were to identify on this map um, where the worship center would be, 
Also, where is the school? Where is the public park? I so, here. so the thousand feet to each area is pretty. I guess I'm trying to get to his question. The thousand feet from each of those currently. A thousand feet is less than two blocks. He said, "Cross the street." I'm not happy about that. I'm just trying. Yes. So, as you know, the Kai Fellowship is located here. Mm-hmm. And that's the corner. school is okay. located here. Okay. It's purple. The mm -hmm. school is purple. So it's cross street. He said cross mm -hmm. street. We're not saying it's going to happen, but he has it, it's right. It's close. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. Kind of. Exactly. And the public park would be it's the here. green. The green. Okay. I. I would like to know what footage distance is consistent with our neighboring cities for making any kind of a decision, to be honest. Um, and maybe we can look into the laws and see if they can allow us to well, like decide some permission of like which business. Would like to come in? Well, no. Oh, we, have, we, can we have to. No, they have, have to, to be allowed. allowed. They're allowed. They have yeah. to. Yeah. Constitutionally and legally, we have to allow that type of business. But we have some discretion in terms of distance from from churches and schools, regulations, and residences. Which what you're doing is exercising your police powers under zoning laws, which is and what you need to avoid is an arbitrary basis for it. So. Your your discussion is exceptionally helpful. We can explore the distances and other issues and bring them back before you. I, you don't want to adopt this. I would love to know what's what's consistent with with our surrounding cities. Sure, we can do that. And that certainly wouldn't be arbitrary. That would correct. Be, and, 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 and also, an we'd, we'd we'd analyze it. What we can't do, and and I just so you know, I've been in federal court on this issue, so I'm I'm not an expert on. <laughs> business of these natures. Uh, I just uh, had the experience where other clients, municipal clients, have been sued on it. Right. So we're the, certainly going to avoid that. That's the we're trying to this is <laughs> this yeah, no. this is a regulation of a lawful business. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, we're certainly and, not and so trying to step gonna, on the constitution but, right. to allow it, but we're also going to uh, sure you can care carefully craft it. Yeah. So what I was gonna suggest to you, Mayor and members of the council, your discussion is helpful. If you want to table it, I need, I need a motion to table. After you raise the issues, you can't discuss it after you're tabling it. So bring these issues Fair enough. To, and, and we can look at it. What I want to also express to you, one of the strongest elements of this particular ordinance, notwithstanding distance, notwithstanding location, is the prohibition of selling alcohol. We can regulate that and we can prohibit it and it has been very effective. It's recognized okay. by the courts. So we don't focus on, you know, the conduct. Is, is that exactly. in this ordinance? Yes, yes, sir, it is. Right now? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes. That's, that's why I'm bringing it to your attention. It's not highlighted, it's just. Are we, are we currently prohibiting the sale of alcohol in these types of establishments? Yes. For the ordinance? Yes. Yes, it's in the ordinance. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. We haven't got an ordinance. Well, well the, the, ordinance the, proposed, the proposed yeah. ordinance does that's, prohibit alcohol. That's what I, my client, we prevailed in court on that element. We shut down a business that it was in one location for 30 years. That's the economic burden of not selling alcohol changes the business model of that particular business. Understood. It is much more effective than Distance is exactly uh, in a, That's a so, key. but I want to emphasize that will dissuade businesses of this nature yeah. because I think the business model, in addition to the entertainment, is the sale of alcoholic beverages. And if you prohibit that, which you lawfully can, and which this ordinance allows for, okay, I think you are a step ahead of other municipalities. Addressing this particular issue. Understood. I'd, I'd still like to entertain a motion to table while we. I have one more question. While we find out um, 
what our neighboring cities are doing, but please, Mr. Um, no, so what defines a public park? I mean, we just talk about just a regular park or the parks that are within the communities or by HOAs or, or the, the mounds that we have all along Seminole Pratt that have a sidewalk, but is that considered a park or a public park area? I mean, it's not really owned by the people that actually are leasing that space. That's a great question. And we need to look at the definition in our zoning code. What is a public, how is a public park defined? So I, I don't yeah. have it right Absolutely. with me here, the definition. Take out a lot of stuff. We'll, we'll look at linear parks as well. Linear parks, yes. HOA owned parks, fitness parks. Look at all of them. Generally speaking, we only consider public parks, but your question resonates with the importance of that definition. Yes. So we're, we will we'll look come at back it. and that may the adventure park. It, it may warrant a, a, an amendment to another section of the code, but thank you for raising okay. the issue. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Then if there's nothing else, I'll make a motion to table it. Is there any, before, are there any other issues you want us to look at? We got distance, we got parks. What about uh, operating hours? Um, the ordinance has a specific detail with regard to uh, the process to apply for a license and with regard to operating hours has, um, I believe it's on page five of the ordinance. No, it's not there. No. It's not there. It's in here. Not in page five. So where exactly? Hours of operation are between no sexually oriented business shall be or remain open for business between 1 a.m. and 8 a.m. So 12.59. Um, do you want us to look what at that? What discussion do we have in terms of operating hours? You, you could, I, I would ask you to consider maybe midnight and then 10 a.m. or some okay. like, uh, like other businesses that you yeah. regulate. We can look at that. Let's look at that as well. Let's Can look at operating hours. We already have a noise ordinance. Let's look at operating hours. Let's look at the distance and let's look, the at, alcohol and let's look at the already. definition of parks. And we've already uh, considered the alcohol sales. Can they have their own zoning classification yeah. or is that too specific for one I group? Think of... that would be no, uh, sure. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the, the, you can't go in. Well, of course you look at, I've been asked in court by a federal judge. How come you only have X number of establishments? So we got to be careful. We, mm -hmm. you want to be able to, I'll, the key is to allow them. Right, yeah. mm -hmm. but to regulate the business operation, exactly. that has been the proven way of really maintaining. Yes, a balance, Got if it. you will, without saying it yeah. understood. Um, should we open up for public comment? Sure. Yes, sir. We, uh, it, we if you want to bring entertain a motion. Yes, sir. Because once you table, there is no yeah, discussion. Let's, let's go over. ahead and do that. Um, and you just state your name and address for the record. Thank you, Nielsa. Gary Warner again, 16005 Kivas Gain Lane. Um, just a question. I'm full of questions tonight. Once an entitlement is granted for land use, is there a way to regulate the issuance of a license by investigating the proprietor, the management of that operation? Because uh, based on my experience, there are a lot of duplicated um, uses like this from the same owner. And if they have a criminal background or a, 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 a background that the police would have some in, some in knowledge about, then you can, I think, regulate it further that way. Is that a question for legal? I'd be happy to answer because the ordinance has an express provision regarding licensing requirements. Revocation, suspension, removal, we've addressed that issue very okay. thoroughly. So the, so the proprietor is, in, is, you looked into this background before the license is issued, uh -huh. is what I surmise from here. Yes, um, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Werner. 
Um, Zoe, should we do public comment via? Mayor, Mayor, I received no previous comment cards. We'll give the virtual audience a moment to raise their virtual hands. If you've been muted, please press star six to speak. Mayor, I have no comments. Thank you, Zoe. Before we table or entertain a motion to table, Nielsa, do you have another comment? Yes, I just I just wanted to point it out that um, the this proposed ordinance has a number of requirements to issue a license. Mm -hmm. It's very very detailed. It's on page eleven, so there is a whole process that the applicant needs to go through before they are allowed. You know, they are um, to they are permitted to conduct this uh, uh, type of business. And also, I was. Uh, I was just uh, thinking loud if this will be table to a certain time, which will be the next uh, the next council meeting or. Yes, uh, I, I would like to entertain a motion to table to the next council meeting, providing we uh, look into those key issues that. We had a great discussion on it, but. Be to the next council the meeting. The council, because what did we. Impede them with holidays. Oh, in May, we actually have to. Uh, we have to talk about while well, we're just free flowing of ideas. We have to talk about the is it the February or the March meeting. It falls on the March legislation, uh, the legislative session. We're going to have to move that meeting either on February. With the leagues up there for Tallahassee. Uh, mm -hmm. Those are Palm Beach County days, but uh, is it on, in February meeting? Uh, March, March meeting. meeting. March meeting. March okay. Meeting. So March that's third have to be like probably that. the week after. All right. So next next it is that Tuesday. Yeah. Next council meeting will adjust the the day for the, the March meeting. For the March meeting. Um, Could I ask for the council's consideration bring this back in February? Yes. So, yes. I mean yeah. it's with the oh, holidays in the. Per, we well, the motion, the motion table, table should be for time certain. Yeah. Table for February. You want to do it? Yeah, I can um, make a motion to table this discussion for staff to review. Come back to us for the February meeting that we can hear from the um, staff again and then vote on the ordinance. For first reading. For first reading. Thank you, sir. Second. Excellent. We have a motion by Vice Mayor Langowski, seconded by Councilwoman Vallaron. Roll call Councilman Martinez. Yes. Councilwoman Vallaron. Yes. Vice Mayor Langowski. Yes. Mayor O'Connor? Yes. Councilwoman Leonard? Yes. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you. Moving forward, we have, uh, excuse me, 2022 34, uh, a development fee schedule. This is a, a much better, yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it's a much better topic. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council Member, Nisa Zacarias, Planning and Zoning Director for the City of Westlake. Uh, in front of you is the resolution that will establish the City of Westlake fees for uh, land development regulations for the Planning and Zoning um, Department and the Engineering Department. Since the city was created in 2016, uh, we have been um, charging all the applicants based on the county uh, fees. So, and now with this resolution, we will have our own fees. So we've been working together with uh, our uh, city manager, with our um, engineering director and all of us. So uh, this is in front of you uh, for a recommendation to approve. Thank you, Neil. So, City Attorney, title only. Yes, sir. Resolution City Council, City of Westlake, Florida, adopting and approving the proposed development fee schedule. Copy of the fee schedule is attached as Exhibit A, providing conflict, severability, and effective date. Thank you. Um, do we have a presentation or? No, it's uh, the fees are in, in front of you. And um, compared to the county fees, or, or, are we higher than the county? Are we less than the county? What's the scoop? We have conducted, we have looked at other municipalities and, uh, comparable with our size, and these are in the bulk of uh, the other municipalities. That wasn't my question. Compared to the county fees, are we higher than we were previously charging? No. Are we higher no. than what no, we were charging? No, we higher. Higher. no, 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 we are no higher. No, 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 we are no higher. All right, so the fees are going down. 
the development fees on the reviews are going down and they're consistent with other municipalities of our size and type that are doing this type of work. Excellent. Um, we're in also in the process of looking at the building department fee structure as well to get off of the counties and develop our own because it is a little bit off from what we really need on revenue and stuff. So we're going to be adjusting those as well. Fantastic. This is the first one. And any have uh, any other discussion from the council <clears throat> regarding uh, development fees? No, it sounds great that they're lower. Fees are going down. I will chime in because I also sit now on the Board of League of Cities uh, land use and economic development. I know that the league is um, trying to propose um, more home rule to the cities, to the legislature for the, the funding of these fees. So that might change in the future for us, for the better. Thank you. Home rule is the greatest thing on the planet. <laughs> more home rule, the better. If there is no further discussion, I would love to entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Vice Mayor Langowski, seconded by Councilwoman Vallarón. Roll call. Councilwoman Vallarón. Yes. Vice Mayor Langowski. Yes. Mayor O'Connor. Yes. Councilwoman Leonard. Yes. Councilman Martinez. Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. Thank you. Item D, Education and Youth Advisory Board. We have a vacancy. Uh, City Clerk, please explain this item further. Um, alternate board member Earl Wright, uh, his term expired at the Education and Youth Advisory Board on September 2nd, 2022, creating a vacancy. A notice of vacancy was published to fill the position October 24th and closed on November 22nd. One application has been received by Ashley Marola, which is presented before you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Vice Mayor, this is your deal. What's going on with the Youth Advisory Board? And uh, maybe take this opportunity. I mean, we only got one application and there's one vacancy, so that's a given, but maybe take this opportunity to tell us uh, about the status of the Right board. now, the, the last two meetings were um, postponed and changed, so the next one is December 14th Okay, um, is our next meeting. There were some conflicts with some of the members meeting, um, so our next one's going to be December 14th. So no... Uh, no update because meetings have been postponed. Okay, um, city attorney, read if, title. If you would uh, respectfully, mayor, make this a two-step process. Prior to considering the resolution, make the appointment for the applicant. And I didn't get her last name. Marola, M-E-R-O-L-A. Let's make this a two-step process. Let's uh, entertain a motion to appoint Ms. Marola to the Youth Advisory Board following a motion to approve the resolution. I motion need... to approve Ms. Marola to the Advisory Board. Second. Motion by Councilman Martinez, seconded by Vice Mayor Langowski. Roll call. Vice Mayor Langowski? Yes. Mayor O'Connor? Yes. Councilwoman Leonard? Yes. Councilman Martinez? Yes. Councilwoman Valladon? Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Resolution by title only, a resolution of City Council, City of Westlake, appointing Ashley Marolo to serve as an alternate member on the Education and Youth Advisory Board, providing for conflict, severability, and effective date. Thank you. I'd like to entertain a motion to adopt resolution 2022-35, please. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Vice Mayor Langowski, seconded by Councilman Martinez. Roll call. Mayor O'Connor? Yes. Council, Councilwoman Leonard? Yes. Councilman Martinez? Yes. Councilman Bayeron? Yes. Vice Mayor Langowski? Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, some exciting, some exciting uh, consideration here. We've got the holiday pop-up market will be this weekend, so, uh, Sunday, December 11th from 10 to 3. As we have done in previous events, we secured the space with a land use agreement between the city and Minto. I believe we're using uh, Minto's land just for parking. Yes. And uh, the event will be held on the street. We're going to close down the road. Um, the, it is my understanding that this agreement was just completed and has been executed by Minto. Copies of the temporary use agreement have been made available. Do we have any council comments? None. No comments. 
The no. pop-up market's going to be fun. There's there's 50 plus vendors. There's food trucks. Uh, whiskey business is going to be there. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. There'll be some brunch food, some brunch drinks, lots of vendors. A lot of them owned by fellow Westlakers. A lot of them from outside the area. It's going to be a very cool little green market. Uh, Santa will be there. Free Santa photos. I, you know, I made some calls. I pulled some strings. These Santa will be here in Westlake taking pictures with all the kids. So I'm very excited about that. And um, if there's no further discussion, may we please have a motion to approve the temporary use agreement. And authorizing the manager to execute. May we please entertain a motion to authorize our city manager to execute the temporary use agreement. Motion to approve. Second. Second. I didn't hear who made the motion. Thank you. Motion by Vice Mayor Langowski, seconded by Councilman Martinez. Councilwoman Leonard. Yes. Councilman Martinez. Yes. Councilwoman Valladon. Yes. Vice Mayor Langowski. Yes. Mayor O'Connor. Yes. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you. Thank you. Item F transportation 2023 funding programs. Mr. City manager. Let's talk about vision 0 and state streets. Yes, Mr. Mayor, that is a program that is out by the TPA. They are working on securing funding and distributing funding for improving uh, multimodal paths and other roadways and street safety. And the goal is for <clears throat> zero traffic deaths from pedestrians in the areas. Uh, we have uh, put together a listing of several areas which are in the county right away, which we're working with the county and have notified them to uh, apply for these fundings to change the sections of uh, sidewalk, for example, in front of the school on the west side, which is a narrow sidewalk, which would be wider up to the multimodal path, the section in front of the 7-Eleven 1.0, the section in front of uh, the Winn-Dixie Plaza area, also, which are narrow five-foot sidewalks, which would be widened wider for more of a multimodal effect. And I just remembered another one that I put out today to uh, Mr. Ricks, um, asking that they also include the section between Seminole Pratt Whitney Road and Cheatham Hill on the north side of Sycamore to actually install a sidewalk there for the people who live to the west mm -hmm. of us for access to school, et cetera, for a safe way to get over to here. Not a sidewalk, a multimodal path. Multimodal path, path. yes. Along that north side of their right of way on on uh, Sycamore, to include that as part of our request as well. That will also facilitate because there are a lot of students over there that do come over, and right now they're just walking on the side of the road, kind of a scenario. Um, I suppose the only question I would have is if this moves forward by council, is this officially us adopting Safe Streets and Vision Zero? Or does that need to be another item that comes before us? No, I think you can adopt it yes. subject to uh, compliance with the terms and provisions. Right. Because I'd like to officially yeah. do that so that I can tell the TPA that we are now Vision Zero and Safe Streets. And I've not many Homeless County municipalities that are part of it right now. So it's, it's a handful, getting, but it's a, it's it's a not phenomenal like thing. Like it. It's a push. Can you explain more about it? I sit on the uh, technical advisory committee for the TPA. Basically, their goal is it's a resolution, um, but their goal is to have zero deaths on streets for pedestrians um, and special pedestrians. Did you not stand behind that? No, I mean, you should absolutely stand behind it, but it's uh, there's 2 terms for it. It's, it's vision 0 and then the safe streets um, tied into that is a lot of potential funding. Uh, from, from federal and county government in order to get it all paid for mm -hmm. because a lot of cities aren't as fortunate as us to be completely brand new and everything's new from okay. scratch. So, you know, a lot of cities, it would be re-engineering their existing. Um, we were, you know, we're fortunate enough to have multimodals baked into almost our entire city. There's a lot of areas that are still in the counties right away that were pre-existing that aren't, you know, full multimodals and so on and so forth. But this is definitely something that that we need to do, and I'm glad we're doing. So, Mr. Mayor, based on the staff's recommendation, what we 
first secure the funds, have the project complete, and then make a resolution that our no, city is then. Regardless of funding, whether it's whether it comes or never comes, we should still absolutely adopt Vision Zero and Safe Streets just because it's good policy. It's okay. Good. So you're right. saying adopt the absolutely okay. not, because who's not, not for reducing right. the amount of pedestrian deaths deaths on roads? You know, it's. We I should, thought you were saying we were not going to have any, so it's basically no, 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 no. Okay. We're 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 yeah. we're basically passing resolutions and adopting resolutions that's that state that we're in favor of. Of reducing okay. um, and pedestrian that makes injuries and, and so on and so forth. In support of that, then we also can come to the table as part of the TPA and say, hey, here's some sections that we don't own the particular piece of road, but the county does, but we're in support of the county getting funds to fix this piece because it is a hazardous area, shall we say, to improve it. So when the county goes in with their application for funding, then it has our support for that piece within the within the city gotcha. there's there's okay. i mean there's more to it it's about mobility as well it's about getting cars off the road mm -hmm. you know we already have a golf cart ordinance golf carts use our multimodal pathways mm -hmm. it's it's about getting cars off the road it's about mobility primarily it's about safety okay. so i'm i'm very glad uh that we're adopting that we're hopefully going to move to adopt this mm -hmm. and um I think that the motion needs to be to adopt yes, the safe right. streets resolution and vision zero. If that's yeah, anything we can do to get behind that would be that can amazing. I had a question for um, Ken. Mm -hmm. Part of the component is also bicycle safety. On our streets currently, when you're downtown center persimmon, we have an edge there. Is that a bicycle lane? A double because if it is, I think it. I believe we have to stripe it too. Oh, the green stripes. Well, not it's green, not required your striping, but I'll look. I know we have on several of them. It is white, I believe, wide enough for a bicycle, but we do not have some of the bicycle markings on it. Okay. But I'll I'll double check to make sure it's the right. This is the green where they can use the stick figure. Yeah, let's make sure we comply with right with whatever it is. I know we had a an issue with um, county fire on the width of the roads and stuff on persimmon because they did not want it but they had to have a certain width and they didn't want it marked because it was if it, if it doesn't doesn't fit the width that they need for their fire truck so it's a it's a conflict that we had yeah. it's a very nuanced section that we had to do on town center parkway but we're working through those issues so i mean just to confirm and i know you already kind of answered this um we don't have to actually have the physical Resolutions. At no, you can meeting. adopt it by a motion. Adopt it by a motion right now. Yes, sir. Okay. So motion to adopt. That motion. I was going to say, so just to be clear, it's going to be the words that's here and include safe strip resolution and vision safe zero. Safe streets resolution and vision okay. zero resolutions. <laughs> Let's. I want. I need somebody to make that motion, please. All right, so Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to acknowledge the program and encourage the county to secure funds to improve the county sidewalks within Westlake. Also to adopt uh, safe streets resolution and vision zero. Second. Motion by Councilwoman Leonard, seconded by Councilwoman Bayeron. Roll call, Councilman Martinez. Yes. Councilwoman Bayeron. Yes. Vice Mayor Langowski. Yes. Mayor O'Connor. Yes. Councilwoman Leonard. Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Mr. Mayor, before we leave this, um, I would suggest that uh, we extend to the head of the TPA. She did a wonderful presentation today on the Western Communities Council meeting on a lot of the transportation, what's going on, what's happening, what's and it ties into the Vision sure. Zero, et cetera. I would request that we extend an offer to her to come to our January meeting do the same presentation so that the council and the community is aware of what types of things are going on for transportation, multimodal, um, getting cars off the streets, all that stuff. That's going to be I have a, uh, I have a tech meeting tomorrow. So if you would I'll extend that extend offer in person, to and then if uh, staff can send her something officially, that would be great. You will. But I will, uh, she did a phenomenal presentation today. Yeah. She's a rock star. So absolutely. Let's uh, let's move forward to council comments, um, starting with Ms. Leonard. I don't have any comments, but I just just for clarification, will we be having our January 
February meeting on the 3rd. That is just wanting to make sure that's still confirmed. No I issues. I don't think there's any issues with, with the 3rd. Okay. Just wanting to make sure. All right. Nothing else. All right. Councilman Martinez. Oops. Happy we're now a resident uh, council. It's been a great year and I'm looking forward to next year. Another comment so far. Okay. Oh, actually, no. Okay. Oh, yeah. 5K. It's a, 5K. 5K will be January. No, 2024 will be the official 5K. Mm -hmm. Right now we have a small resident 5K that I'm just having all the residents come okay. out and do. So not as big and grand, but at least get the idea out there and get people out moving. 2024 is the, the official. That'll be the grand. Do we have a month yet? It'll be. First or second weekend of January. January. It's beginning of the year. January 2024. Let's go. <laughs> yes. Um, um, something I've seen actually some residents talk about is um, I thought it would be really nice, but obviously everything comes down to budget in the city of a Christmas tree lighting. Uh, sounds very, I feel like we're very ahead of it, but we plan ahead of time. Is that something we're looking to as far as budget? Maybe something we can yeah. do sponsorship. I mean, I think we, we can definitely make that a budget discussion for 2020 for next year. I mean, it's a little tight. I don't think we can pull anything off in a few weeks. No, not for this year. I'm talking about for next year, but yeah, yeah um, at least just get on agenda, get the ball rolling. I, um, as Fine. long as that Christmas tree isn't stepping on any legal. It would have to be a holiday separation, a celebration, and okay. I either the provider nor another thing. Yes, sir. Sure, absolutely. And and use of land, but yeah, you know, I think we have to have a temporary, temporary use of use land. Of land. Temporary yeah. use of land, but I'm not opposed by any means to it. Um, I guess the consensus is uh, we're good to go. Staff, let's start planning a uh, Christmas tree lighting for the next year. Yeah, I think with having some celebration. celebration, yeah, holiday celebration, holiday celebration. celebration. yeah. And if we can find a great location, you know, somewhere close and somewhere prime with everyone driving through, I think it'll really light up uh, our city. Sure. That would be great. Yeah, let's uh, let's start that dialogue. Yeah. And um, work it into next year's budget. Your committee has one more thing to work on. And they're good at what they do. Yes. So. <laughs> Senora Valleron. So I'm so excited about the holiday pop-up market. I will be there and that's step forward for our city. Happy Merry Christmas if I don't see you guys again. Thank you for being here today um, and working hard for us. All of you, thank you very much for working hard for us every day, all of you. Um, and Happy New Year if I don't see you also. That's yeah. it. Fantastic, yeah. thank you. Mr. Vice Mayor. I have no comments. Okay. Um, I'll just uh, echo Councilwoman Valladon's sentiments. We won't see each other uh, before Christmas in an official capacity. So I just want to wish everybody a happy holidays, Merry Christmas. Um, we, let's see, there's been several conferences since. Our last meeting, there was Kansas City for the National League of Sitting Cities. That was very, very productive and informative. Just recently, the vice mayor and I had the Florida League of Cities Legislative Conference. Um, I feel like we got a lot of it out of that. And um, we're just going to keep pushing forward and moving the city forward. And I think we're doing a wonderful job. And I very, very much hope to see everybody on the 11th for the holiday pop up market. And I just want to thank staff and my council for their leadership and the tremendous job that everyone's doing. Thank to you. The the results are here. I mean, we're doing a wonderful job. So I just want to thank you. Let's move on to staff reports. We've got uh, Chief Oliveira in the house. If you would be so kind as to tell us what's going on with fire in Westlake. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council. Uh, Philip Oliveri, District Chief, Palm Beach County Fire Rescue. Uh, so, looked over the response reports this last month, November, 32 calls in the city. Uh, again, mostly medical calls and alarms. So, thankfully, it's usually pretty quiet, nothing too crazy going on. Uh, response times have maintained our dispatch handling time. It's been 43 seconds, turnout times 44 seconds, and travel time 4 minutes and 49 seconds. So, 
guys are doing a good job of getting out of the station and getting to the calls and making sure we're helping the residents out when they're in need. Uh, a little bit of the happenings that happened throughout Palm Beach County with fire rescue, uh, just some talking points. Uh, you guys heard about the gas tanker fire, I'm sure, that was down south on 95. Uh, just some of the things that we were able to do. There were 29 total units on that scene. 12 of them were from Palm Beach County Fire Rescue. Oh, wow. So it was a big that deal. Was, that was Delray? Where was it? Yes, that was, that was down Delray. south. Yeah, yeah. correct. Uh, ALS competition team, we have a team that competes across the state uh, doing uh, different types of medical call scenarios and stuff. Uh, they actually won the Florida Cup, so took first place. Uh, it is a, a really good team, obviously, with uh, the medical direction we have here in the county and the training that we do. All of our skills are, are top-notch, so all of our teams do a great job. Uh, Hurricane Nicole, we upstaffed a lot of our units uh, for command staff units. Uh, out here, we have Tender uh, 22 was upstaffed with two people. I'm sorry, the high-water vehicle was upstaffed with two, vehicle, two people on the vehicle. Uh, just in case there's any flooding, usually in the western area, just west of Westlake, get some uh, bad flooding out there if the canals aren't lowered in time or different situations, depending on how much rain we get. So um, let's see, total, uh, we didn't have any missed calls or interruptions of service during the storm. So, Great. and I know everything out here was was good. There were no issues. So uh, we had Sarasota County Fire Rescue came and visit. Uh, they're very interested in how we were able to get a class one certification with ISO. So <laughs> congratulations. Uh, since we were able to achieve that, we'll see that more throughout the state. Some of the bigger departments coming to visit and kind of see how we're doing it, maintaining our records and doing our training and, and meeting those goals. So it's always good when we have those other departments coming to check us out and see how we're doing. Uh, we had a recruit class graduate recruit class 86. Uh, 16 new firefighters and EMTs out in the field. We had three of them come out here to the Western communities. So they worked their way through station 22 every once in a while. So uh, we're doing a lot of hiring. There's gonna be a lot more hiring coming up in the next year. So I think we're looking to hire 200 more firefighters in the next year. So a lot, a lot of new people coming around. Uh, and one of the other things that's kind of neat is we started putting sensory kits out on our rescue trucks and yeah, our engines. That's great. Which is really good for when we're dealing with those kids who have special needs and. Uh, those other considerations to kind of get their mind off of the situation that's going on and get them to calm down. So it, it's it's really a good thing that our community risk division does with the, with the kids and making sure that all the crews have the supplies that they need. So that just started, right? Yes, that's that's a very recent just came out. Fantastic. Yep. Um, I guess the only question I would have is is you know we did click to enter you know in a lot of our neighborhoods. Is there anything else you might need from us to get you to where you need to go? Quicker. Uh, no, I, 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 that's huge. Click to enter, right? You guys are one of the first cities, obviously, being the newer city and everything being able to be at the start of what's going on. Uh, it is something that we're working throughout the county to do. So to see it in a city like this, it, it helps us tremendously. It, it eliminates a lot of the need for, you know, the firefighters to get out of the trucks and have to use right. the key at the Knox box or, you know, some of the cities also use like a, a remote clicker that they have for their gates. But this is the best way because it doesn't matter if it's a local unit responding to this, the different areas, or if it's a unit coming from outside. So sometimes station 26 might be coming over here, station 21, station 28, and they can all use the click to enter. There's no confusion of having to change their entry. So there's nothing else you need from the city? Everything's pretty good. I know you guys have been working with community risk as well uh, for events and stuff. So just make sure you continue to reach out with them. Uh, they're going to control a lot of that stuff to, to help us and I know the uh, the road width came up, so that's that's one thing. You know, our community risk department is sure. they're really good. They're on top of it and make sure everything's good. And, and again, with you guys doing everything from the ground up, it kind of makes it smooth. You want to get it right now, so yes, you don't sir. Have to come back and fix it later. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, Chief, I thank you. Does anybody have any uh, questions or comments for the chief? Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate everything you do. Thank, thank you. you so much. Captain Turner, do you want to? It's good to be back. It's been a few months since I've seen everybody. Um, uh, hopefully, the lieutenant's been doing what he's supposed to be doing out here. I know Ken talks to him all the time, and he's actually gotten access to my sergeants now, so he never calls me anymore. <laughs> Sad a little bit. Only on the bad ones. Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, a couple things I wanted to cover. Um, countywide, actually statewide, no trespass signs. Uh, they they changed the law for the way the no trespass signs are being used. So we're going to have to come out in the entire county and replace every single sign. So we're sending 
deputies from the districts through a schooling to do that. And then they're gonna come out here and they're gonna hit every location that has no trespass signs, every so every home and business and property of the city or the county or whatever. Sure. And they're gonna have to come out and redo every single one of them. So that's probably gonna take about a six month period to get through all of them and, and get everything reset. But they did change the law. So the verbiage has to be amended on each one of those signs in the way that the uh, property owner or the business owner is put on there and the and, and you'll get you'll get all the information on that when it comes down but every one of those gonna have to be changed in the next six months uh, you do have a sixth deputy that has started out here in October Nathan Turner no relation um, he does cover mostly night shift and so you have a deputy that covers day shift in Duval so now you have if you have any events that come up without having to ask for overtime or have me cover with overtime, I can change their schedules so that if I know you have an event coming up where you want additional deputies, I'll make sure that those deputies are scheduled to work the same night. Right. So that way we can handle it, you know, daytime, nighttime, and it will cut back on any issues you might have if you have a big event where I can bring extra deputies in without a cost to you through your city or the agency. Not bad. Um, Narcan, talk about new equipment. Um, the Sheriff's Office changed its stance last month and now all the deputies have Narcan. So hopefully they don't have to use it out here, but but they do. And something I found out- Every which, deputy has it? Every deputy. I even have it in my desk. Um, so hopefully nobody in my office ODs. Yeah, I was <laughs> um, I did find out something interesting, and, and I know the, popu the populace might not know this, but if you, you know, there's jokes that go around about, hey, used it on somebody that was just sleeping or somebody with a, a condition or whatever. If you actually use Narcan on somebody, and I know the chief could probably back this up, on somebody that isn't overdosing on drugs, it actually has no effect on them. Zero. Zero. That's what I was told. So if if anyone's worried about something like that happening, it's, they, they can rest easy because it shouldn't have any effect on them whatsoever. Wow. It actually, it it actually interacts with the opioids in their system and actually that's what makes it work. So if, if they have none, yep, there's no issues. Exactly. Um, new district funding, uh, 2023 is the year we're supposed to get the funding for our district. Uh, I know that some stuff has gone back and forth and I know that's uh, uh, something we've been dealing with for about two years now, finalizing that, but hopefully sometime in the next couple of months I start really hearing you know, the our concrete plan going to effect because this is the year we're supposed to get our, our district being built. Okay. So other than that, if you have any questions. Um, no, thank, I mean, thank you for everything. District six would be, I mean, that would be out here on our property. That would be the sub potential so subdivision that yeah. out here. Yeah. It's great. Yep. Yeah. Um, you might know, this is really a question for chief, but does, does the fire department have Narcan also? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yes, sir. Very awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear everybody. Um, <laughs> thank you. Any, any questions for? Uh... Right. Thank you. Thanks so thank much. You. Appreciate everything you do. Mr. City Manager, you're up. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, a couple things um, to answer your question earlier. The fill that's on the lot across from the tax collector is to fill in part of that lake as part of the land transfer to the county for the facility that the captain just spoke about. Um, we're about ready to drain that lake finally. Winn-Dixie has finally made their fire connection. They're doing their final Great. change outs and stuff to get done so that we can drain the lake, fill it, and then get that land transferred to the county. Um, I see some movement on our uh, future park site. Yes. Want to talk about that? Yes. Um, Sid has um, issued the contract for the work to begin on uh, the extension of the reuse lines, some water lines, also the excavation of the linear lake that will be running north to south behind the uh, berm and the entrance areas would be culverted so that there's actually will be a water break between access from the public to the park. So we don't have to fence the whole thing. It would natural be a lake barrier. between the two, a natural barrier. The only thing we have to fence is the uh, entry gates. So it helps control access after hours, et cetera, for that. Um, we are also working on, uh, with Don Herring, I have his final uh, scope of services that we're reviewing. 
uh, to have Don Herring, who Sid in, employed to do a initial layout of the potential park and what we can do out there, which will be coming back and also working with the council for their input as to what we can do. I understand that there's been some potential funding, so we should have some uh, dollar amounts that we can put with that to get back to that individual on the funding. Uh, so we'll be pushing that pretty quick. Um, the RO expansion has started. Um, they're getting ready, Sid's getting ready to go out for the um, the RO plan itself, will, or reverse tanks will be out in the next couple of weeks. And then the other one, it would be their facility on the Western side will be being constructed. Uh, you may notice on uh, Persimmon that there's some signposts with black trash bags on them. I didn't. But... There are there are starting. The contractor is starting on that four-way stop. Oh, okay. Uh, the process is they'll be installing the signs, bagging them, then putting up the um, required notification signs so that as the notification runs out, then we can stripe it, put the uh, crosswalks in and be done, and then just pull the bags and put it in place. How long does that process take? I think it's a four-week uh, sign requirement so for by, notification. by next meeting, it'll be done? No, we won't be actually putting the signs out over the holidays. Probably be by February, we should okay. be done. Right. So that, that should turn that into a four-way stop. And uh, the other thing that'll be coming out in the second quarter, probably in February, Sid will be going to the street for um, changing the crossing areas at the roundabout on Town Center Parkway so that you can actually get a golf cart through them. Thank you. Uh, that was put into their this year budget, uh, so we'll be going to the street for that Very probably cool. in January for February start. Fantastic. And that's about all I've got. One question. Yeah. Um, are we going to have a table for how it's going to be? I thought we we're going to talk about the park, like what the residents want in the park. Are we going to have a table for that or no? Um, shop. Yeah. We're going to have a workshop. Yes, we'll have a workshop with. Uh, as soon as I get the scope kind of buried, cleaned up with Don Herring and stuff, we'll have some preliminary stuff. We'll be coming in and sit down in the workshop with the council and the uh, SID board as to what we can do and what we can phase, what, what some of the ideas are. Um, There'll be some some costs. Yes, some additional proposal. costs, yes. But I mean, like, when we see the options, will there be some price tags? I'm sure Don will have some rough rough okay. estimates. And also how we can phase it so that we can potentially do some certain certain things. We have some there's some pretty good ideas out there floating about how to make it where it's really usable. As I discussed before, we are one of the initial concepts is to have an area that's set up for food trucks mm -hmm. with electricity and water. So that if we have an event, sure. they just pull up and we give them their stall, they can do it. We can have multiple events. There's potentially a thought process of being able to have an area where you can have more concerts or uh, movies on the on the lawn kind of a thing, and how to set that up. And those are kind of just general parameters and paintbrush of right. things that we really want that park to be multi usable Use. with a lot of things because most of the other things that are, are people are asking for. Uh, the basketball courts are part of, P, uh, part of the HOA. There's going to be more HOA things coming in other areas for the residents as well. So what the concept is, if those kind of things are being provided by the HOA, we don't want to duplicate them in that part, but we want that park to be so that it has the flexibility to do a lot of different things with it. Well, there's a, I mean, there's a lot of passive, there's a lot of passive things we can do now that we can actually afford yes to do now yes um but you know eventually we're gonna want it all because we have to keep in mind even though it's a westlake city park it's a regional it's, area it's not strictly for westlake residents right the surrounding area doesn't have access to our basketball courts at the hoas and correct so forth. and we certainly want to be inclusive of everybody but you know everything comes with a price tag and we are can be barely standing on our own two feet as it is. So there's a lot of things that we can afford to do now that are going to be passive 
types of items. Um, and but that's great. One other thing is the linear park that Minto is doing along Lake Eight mm -hmm. uh, should be starting in probably second week of January. Great. And then what? Uh, do you have any insight on the completion of the lodge building, Phase Two of the Amenity Center? They were. I don't think they're going to make it. They were telling me by the end of the, the year. End of the year. Yeah. I don't. I was in it a couple of weeks ago. It's. I don't know if they're going to make it or not. First quarter. Should be. I'm. I'll, I'll check with John and them. Great. Excellent. Any questions for Mr. Manager? No. No. No question. Ken, thanks for all your hard work. Yep. My pleasure. Thank you. City Attorney report. Nothing to report this evening. Just allow me to wish you and your family members the, the very best of the holiday season. Thank you. Same. Me too. Same. Let's open up for public comment. May I receive no previous comment cards? We'll give the virtual audience a moment to raise their virtual hands. If you wish to make a comment, please raise your virtual hand, state your name and your address. You'll have three minutes. Mayor, we have no virtual comments. If there is no further business, I will thank everyone for their time and my colleagues for their leadership, and I will adjourn this meeting at 716. Perfect. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks, sir. <laughs>